In the early 1920s, among the top 5% of professions dedicated to women, it is considered a preferred job for impoverished girls. That is the profession of clock face painting. A clock face, a small brush, and a jar emitting a magical green light in the dark. The young, beautiful girls dipped the brush into water and a paint jar, then gently licked the tip of the brush with their lips. They skillfully painted a magical type of paint on the surface of the clock. They did this all day long, paint, their mouths and the clock's face, repeating it over and over. But this girl had no idea that only a few years later, dozens of young and beautiful girls would begin to slowly die because of the most horrifying diseases that humanity could ever imagine. Their teeth fell out and the jaw shattered into pieces after just a light touch. Their legs shattered as they took a step, in the literal sense. In the future, even though they lay deep beneath three feet of soil, that eerie green glow in the dark tombstones would continue to emit an otherworldly light for another 1,600 years. The world would fearfully refer to them as Radium Girls. A beautiful young girl, only 15 years old, is leisurely walking inside the factory where she has just been employed to paint clock faces. What's unique about this is that it's a type of paint containing radium, a newly discovered radioactive element by Marie Curie less than 25 years ago. This type of paint makes the clock hands emit a magical green light without the need for solar energy. People say it can cure all kinds of ailments. It sounds almost like magic. Our 15-year-old girl is beautiful and innocent. She often uses this glowing radium paint to paint her lips, apply to her cheeks, and even paint her nails. Indeed, she might think of it as a magical compound. When these girls return home in the evening, they look like radiant angels shining in the darkness. But life is never as simple as that. The beautiful girl began to experience a terrible headache and her teeth ached. One night, she didn't feel well and could only twitch slightly. With just a slight twitch, one of her teeth fell out. Then, one after another, another tooth followed suit. Within just one week, most of the girl's teeth had fallen out. The skin on the face began to peel, and even the jaw had holes. Two weeks later, our beautiful little girl had passed away. And welcome, all of you, to the worst nightmare that has ever befallen the United States. Radium was discovered by Nobel laureate scientists Marie Curie and her husband, Pierre Curie, in 1898. It quickly became a successful cancer-fighting therapy, and thereafter, radium became a powerful wonder drug, much like how we use functional foods today. People were mesmerized by its power. At that time, there was a radium craze indeed. This radioactive material became a kind of vitamin added to a multitude of everyday products, from toothpaste to cosmetics, and even food and beverages. One of the manufacturers, named Radithor, was a fraudulent doctor who even mixed a very small amount of radium into drinking water. They then advertised it as a miraculous elixir of rejuvenation, claiming it could cure all sorts of ailments, from impotence to asthma and gout. Wow, they say not knowing is not a crime. However, the deaths of thousands of people due to the ignorance of a few individuals cannot be denied. The most famous victim of Radithor, do you find this picture familiar? Because it has appeared frequently on YouTube. Yes, allow me to introduce you to Eben Byers, a millionaire, champion American golfer, a devout believer in Radithor, who met a tragic fate. This man believed in every advertisement and consumed up to 1,400 bottles of Radithor, resulting in severe damage to his cells and bones, causing his body to be destroyed from within. Before his death, Ibn Bayer's entire lower jaw and chin had disappeared due to radium poisoning causing decay. The 51-year-old man only has two teeth protruding from a single piece of bone beneath his nose, and there are even holes in the top of his skull, revealing his brain. Do you know about Mrs. Marie Curie's notebook? a truly cursed object by science, and it will take another 1600 years for its radioactivity to decay completely. In 1934, Marie Curie passed away due to a plastic anemia, a condition stemming from prolonged exposure to radium and polonium. She never imagined that her experiments could be harmful, thus contaminating her entire household along with many of her personal belongings. She often carried samples of radium and polonium in her lab coat pockets at the laboratory 
and brought them home for analysis during her spare time. This inadvertently led to the contamination of all her clothing, books, cookbooks, jewelry, and household items, along with many other belongings. It has been determined that the scientist's notebook was contaminated with radium-226, one of the most highly radioactive isotopes. At that time, knowledge was limited, and let's go back to the young women working in our paint factory. They believed that radium was good for their health, and many people around the world were also using it. Europeans used it as a fluorescent wall paint for children. There were Swiss artists who used radium-based paint, and people could easily recognize them even in the darkest of nights. Their hair shimmered as if they had a greenish halo glowing around them. Many things can be coated with radium phosphorescent paint, including signs, theater seat numbers, fishing lures, and doll eyes. Virtually anything people think can be coated with phosphorescent paint must be radium. That's why, in 1914, the Radium Corporation of America was established in New York City. They mixed radium to create a new type of paint called Undark. It is an essential commodity, especially during the First World War, when soldiers lay in a dark trench. It was crucial to be able to check the time to ensure survival, but there was only a small light shunning for them to see the time. They also faced the risk of being killed. Another company emerged in this situation, and its primary goal is to serve the public interest more. This company is called the Radium Dial Company and is headquartered in Orange. In the 1920s, this company employed over 1,000 young women and painted approximately 4,300 luminous watch dials each day. They believed that the younger the girls, the better, with small and nimble hands for the delicate task of painting watch dials. Furthermore, some were as young as 11 when they started, and this was indeed an enticing, gentle, and high-paying job. Many girls even convinced their entire families to join this work. To paint the tiny copper clock, the girls were instructed on how to use their lips to apply the coating, and the factory affirmed that this was completely safe. In this way, radium gradually infiltrated into the body. The radium girls began to believe that they were growing healthier through their work with a new elixir, which was the most expensive substance in the world at that time, valued at approximately 2.2 million US dollars per gram by today's standards. Those girls were likened to artists, contributing to the restoration of high-end, sparkling timepieces. But the joyous days did not last long, and in 1922, the first victim emerged. A 22-year-old female worker, Molly Magia, had to stop working due to falling ill. Initially, Molly had a toothache. After that, the dentist extracted the first painful tooth. Next, the second tooth also started to hurt and was removed as well. But after the teeth were gone, strange lumps began to emerge, resembling dark, sinister flowers. Inside, they were filled with the moist, reddish-yellow hues of blood and pus. These tumors grew rapidly, causing the patient's breath to become increasingly foul and uncomfortable. Then, Molly began to experience excruciating pain in both legs, gradually rendering her unable to walk. In May 1922, Molly Magia found herself in a state of despair. She had lost most of the sensation in her mouth as a terrifying infection had spread, affecting her entire lower jaw, the roof of her mouth, and even parts of her ear bones. Yet the worst was yet to come. Only when the dentist gently tapped on the jawbone, and to his horror, the patient's bone shattered beneath the doctor's fingers. Yes, exactly, it literally shattered. The dentist simply had to use his fingers to reach into the mouth and pick out the bone fragments. Only a few days later, the entire lower jaw of the patient fell out in a similar manner. In September 12, 1922, Maury passed away due to severe hemorrhaging just as she turned 24 years old. Is the sarcasm here implying something? The doctor and the company where she worked recorded in the death certificate that she died of syphilis. After Molly Magia, things gradually worsened. The radium girls began to encounter issues. Some experienced spinal collapse, while others developed skin cancer, eye socket perforation, or throat cancer, along with numerous other symptoms of prolonged exposure to radium, such as fatigue and hair loss. Imagine them licking paintbrushes dipped in radium and swallowing it hundreds of times each day throughout hundreds of days while working at their watch company. But do you know what? 
All the death certificates of the Radium Girls recorded the cause of death as syphilis. The company indeed refused responsibility, and this caused extreme outrage not only among the victims, but also within their families. The legal battle seemed never-ending, and information about the horrifying story of the Radium Girls spread worldwide. In 1925, a doctor named Alice Hamilton participated in the investigation of the death of Molly Magia and researched other cases of fatalities. It was proven that radium itself had caused poisoning in these young women. In capitalist countries, money is the key to controlling everything. After three years, in 1928, the lawsuit was finally successful, marking a significant milestone. At this point, the danger posed by radium was more fully recognized, and the technique of using the lip-pointing brush was prohibited. Workers in the luminous watch industry were required to wear protective equipment. But what is regrettable is that this story has not yet concluded. After more than 10 years in 1939, that the survivors were finally compensated and new documents accurately recorded the true cause of death for those who had passed away. The glow-in-the-dark paint made from radium was gradually phased out and has not been used in watches since 1968. With a decay half-life of up to 1,600 years, once radium enters the human body, it will remain there indefinitely. Do you believe in the notebooks of Marie Curie, the body of Eben Byers, radium girl Molly Magia? All of those things, even though they are being kept extremely safe, whether in a museum or buried deep underground, still emit an eerie green light and continue to radiate for another 1,600 years truly dangerous. And if discovering the terrifying nature of radiation continues to fuel your curiosity, please join us for the latest video on the channel. And now, goodbye and see you again.